this video, I'll show you how to use Esprise Tethering 2 to make background effects like the ones you see in my character designs. I'll also show you how to apply dithering inside shapes to create shadow and light effects as well as texture. Once you have an open document in a sprite, choose an empty layer. Make sure the layer is empty. Now choose two colors. Select one color with a left click, that will be your foreground color. Select the other one with a right click, that will be your background color. Now go to the paint bucket tool. When you click on it, this other option appears. Click on it. Now in the upper bar, new options will appear to you. Here we have the options for linear or radial gradient. We'll try linear for now because that's the one that I use the most. Here you can see you have some options, choose the one that you like the most. I usually stick with the last one, but I'll try all of these so you can see how they look. Now with the left click, drag the mouse from one corner of the layer to the other. You can choose to stop at any moment. As you can see, the background color is applied first and the foreground color is the one that you are controlling with the mouse. Now let's try to make a bow. First, make a circular shape filled with any color. We will use radial gradient now, so switch to the option in the upper bar. Now choose two colors and make sure the background is darker than the foreground color. With the mouse inside the shape, drag from one corner to the other. Make sure you have this option selected so that you're not selecting the layers beneath and messing up the dithering effect. To make a 3D cube, I like to use Express Background Grid to guide me. When doing this, make sure every face of the cube is in a different color so that later we can apply dithering inside each individual shape. Here I'm using Linear Gradient and using the same techniques as before. Make sure you're clicking inside the shape and dragging it. Once you've clicked inside the shape, you can drag the mouse outside the shape, but if you click on the outside of the shape, the outside will be filled with the background color and you'll be dithering outside the shape. Here's the technique I use to change a color that I don't like or that I think don't fit anymore in the painting. I pick the eyedropper tool, I choose the color that I want to change, I go in the upper bar clicking the edit option and then I click the replace color option and then I click the second color there and choose another color that I think will look better. Now I'm going to continue dithering inside this ball to create the backlight effect that you see a lot in shapes like this. And you can actually continue dithering inside the shape as long as there is continuous pixels of the same color inside the shape. Dithering always works best when you're working inside a shape that's filled with one color. When you start to try to dither in a shape that has many colors at the same time, the dithering tool will get confused and you get some strange effects that don't look very good. Now this is something that I do a lot when I want to make shadow for character designs. So I create a new layer, I make sure the layer is empty, I choose two colors and I make sure that the background color is actually lighter than the foreground color because I'm trying to draw shadow. I'll use radio now because I think it'll fit better with the ball. 
and then I just do the same thing as before I drag the mouse inside of this layer making sure I'm putting the shadow not exactly in the place that it needs to be but close to it and once I'm done I'll choose the eyedropper tool and I'll choose the color of the background and I'll change it to an invisible color to transparent color Here you can see that the radio shadow that I made for the ball didn't work very well for the cube. This happens a lot too. Not always did the ring make life easier, sometimes it just makes it look worse and then you have to go in and change it manually until it looks the way that you want it to. Actually, the ring isn't always the best option for me when I'm painting and I notice that and then I have to just make changes manually that happens most of the time so don't always rely on dithering to make these effects because sometimes you need your manual uh, editing to look the best That's it for this video, thank you for watching and I hope that you can apply these techniques to your paintings and I hope that it makes your life easier. Bye bye!